I find that a lot of people actually haven't dealt a whole lot with spark lines before. You know, despite their being around since 2009, that's the correct answer as we found out tonight. Um, so <laughs> that, so it, I just wanted to show everyone some cool things you can do with spark lines. So over here, uh, I have uh, several years, and then I have several months of tornado data, and I actually got rid of the months, January through December here for this example, because we're they're not necessarily um, needed. And then we have the total amount over on the right. So I'm going to jump to the completed tab just to show you um, what I've created. And we'll zoom out just a little bit. So here we actually have spark lines, which um, are the small multiple charts of this data here. And what I've allowed users to do is they can hit this minus here, and they can shrink that information. Because they want to see, let's, we may want to see all this information up front. We want to see it immediately. So now, rather than be sort of bogged down by all the data in those tables, you can actually see these small um, spark lines immediately. And these bar charts reflect the numbers that were um, that you can click here and expand and see. So if you go, go down, I also have the highest point highlighted. And we actually see that the high point here is, um, it tends towards the middle, but it does appear uh, a little bit that there's more variation um, in the earlier years. Now, what that means, I don't really know, but it's something that you can tell with the data. So let's talk about how to make spark lines. So I'm back here in the raw data tab. I'm going to click on my column B. I'll go to insert. That's going to get me a nice space here. And these cells are where your spark lines are going to sit. So this is what makes spark lines so interesting, um, or spark charts, or however you want to call them. Um, they're also, they go by the name small multiples, um, several names. But they sit inside the cell. Now, previously, if you wanted to make something like this in Excel, you had to do a series of font tricks. But here, um, starting from Excel 2010, which came out in 2009, and newer, you don't actually need to do those font tricks anymore. So here I'm going to click. I'm on the Insert tab. I'm in cell B2. Uh, I'm going to click on this column. And here uh, they're asking, what is my data range? Well, we know what my data range are, is. It's going to be C2 through N2. I'm just going to select that. And then... I'll just hit OK because we know what the um, location range is. And you see that it populated with, uh, with the spark lines. Now, here's what's great about this. They also kind of work like functions that I can just drag down. And you see that it's actually going to fill up with all the information. So unlike a chart, you know, Excel charts, I have to select the data and then select the region. There's no easy way to do what I just did. But spark lines makes that a lot easier um, by allowing me to drag down in parallel what I'd like to see. So you see that it started out with this blue font. You know, maybe I don't like that blue font. I can go up here and I can say sparkline color. Maybe I make it kind of a lighter gray. Um, but I may want to see the high point. In this case, I've clicked that high point. I don't know if that is the default or if I set that default previously, but it gives you this red. So now you see very quickly what the high, um, where, you know, the distribution of that high month is. And I can um, scroll down and I can see how it changes through the years. So what's really cool about this is I can see sort of this intra comparison. That is, I can see what the months are for a given year, and then I can see what the what they are across a number of years. So that's really cool. But now that we have this information, we probably want to hide everything else. So I'm going to actually just select. Um, I'm going to select columns or cells C through O. Actually, I think when I want to select cells C through N, we'll see if I uh, do this right. And then I'm going to click data, and here I'm going to click the group button because I want to group them, right? So what grouping allows you to do is um, show and hide columns very quickly. You see it drew this line here, and now there's a minus. I'm going to click that minus to make them shrink. Now you see that my data disappears, so we're going to have to fix that. But, um, but this is something to keep in mind, that when you hide data on spark lines, the default setting is to make it disappear. So what's, again, really cool, and this is why I want to show you this example, I click on cell B2. Now, notice I haven't highlighted every spark line, but it's drawn this blue line uh, around them. So that means the change I'm going to make to one is going to be the change I make to all. So I've selected cell B2. I'm going to go to hidden and empty cells. So I click that design um, context tab, which comes up when you click within a spark line group. I'll click hidden and empty cells. And I'm going to say, show the data in hidden, hidden and empty cells. Now, I just made this change to the first one. But again, it's going to make the change across all of them because they're considered part of a group. So I'm going to shrink that. And now we have this great data visualization, very dashboard-like. Not exactly a dashboard, but it, it does follow these dashboard principles that we love to talk about. So I love Sparklines. I think they're a great tool. I think a lot of folks are still kind of scared to use them because they don't know what they are yet. 
You know, they're just getting off Excel 2003. They had their breakup you know, from Excel 2003. They're just getting off. But now they're ready. They're ready to be taken in in loving arms by Sparklines, by Excel 2013. That's and right. I, I say embrace it. I am, embrace it, you know? Embrace it. Embrace it. Yes. Yes. I knew you'd like that tip, Oz. That one was just for you. I mean, just just the whole um, the grouping, the sparkling, all of that, all of that. Um, I'm thinking of um, it's like the grouping piece, and then just helping deal with clutter, and somebody can see that out of or, you know. Now, question for you: Can you? Um, hmm, okay. I just wonder if, uh, say, uh, our form control can toggle that open and close, or the high points and other things. Um, I don't think it can be done without VBA. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a SparkMinds expert. Um, I'm not really sure. Now, you could probably toggle the high point. Mm, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some formula tricks. I can't think of. I, I probably could think of one in in the next hour or so, but not off the top of my head. The group thing, you probably need a, that you you would need um, some VBA for. But, and but, I like to say, you know, not everyone knows VBA, so I right. like to try to give responses that are, that can do virtually the same thing without the complication. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very, very uh, thoughtful of you. And it, that's good. That's a really good tip <laughs> there. So deserving of every drop of five bottles worth of sriracha. Uh, 